Hi, my name is Dr. Judy Malone. This is my colleague, Dr. Janet Miller. We're psychologists here in Alberta. And we're here today to talk about stress and resilience. Let's start with stress, that part of the equation. What is it? Yeah, stress are these events in our life and more importantly, how we react or perceive those events in our lives. So they can be acute, something that's just happened to us that we're reacting to. Uh, they can be happening over and over again, small, short-term stressors that we need to deal with. Sometimes they can be really chronic stress that we're dealing with high levels of stress over and over again over extended periods of time. I like what you said about how we react to things, right? So what's stressful for me might not be stressful for you. Like right now, I'm feeling some stress. You look very calm. For other people, it might be anything. Any one of us might find that stressful, like a diagnosis or a, a loss in our life. So we know that how we react to stress is a huge component we can manage. We can do things with that, right? We can change our perception to change our stress ah, level. Yes, and that's your area of expertise. So we start with the, the stress itself. We only have so much energy as humans and how much we're impacted by those acute little stressors, mm -hmm. how much they might pile up on us or our long-term really big chronic stressors also depend on how much sleep we're getting, how much social support we're getting. So it's really a pile up or a build up that then really impacts both the stress we have and how we're perceiving that stress. The real buffer is how you are resilient or how you can be resilient to handling that stress. That's really your area. Well, it's one of them. It's true. I do love talking about resilience because there's so much we can do to build and enhance our resilience. We know that life is full of hiccups, that things go wrong. Life is messy. It's never smooth, or at least not in my experience. So if we have a, a coping strategy, a series of attitudes and resources that help us to cope with those hard times, um, then we can thrive, right? Even when the waves are rough or when and the skies are dark, um, not just when everything's going well. So in stress management, we look at uh, really preconditioning. What can we do to be healthy and active and strong and happy before there's a crisis, right? Like that's kind of what you talked about, building your resilience before you need it, like your stores, your... That fits for me, because mm -hmm. I know if I'm not getting enough sleep, if I'm not eating healthy, if I don't exercise regularly, I know I get more stressed out more easily. That's Absolutely. what you mean, right? Yeah, because yeah. then you're close to that line that's like, mm -hmm. oh my gosh, like I don't have a lot of buffer. And the more you take care of yourself and have stronger, robust health and a community of health around you, love in our lives, a career that's in, um, that adds value, where we have satisfaction and purpose, these things add to our resilience before there's a crisis. So those things are all important. When there is a stressor, we try to mitigate the stress as best as we can. So maybe we can change the environment or change the stressor. Like I can avoid, I can reduce, I can have boundaries, right? Like maybe. Mm -hmm. yeah. If I'm dealing with an illness, maybe I gather information, I get treatment, I uh, get educated, I get more knowledge. What can I do to cope with the actual stress itself? Mm -hmm. And then the attitude part, what can we do to change our attitude? So we know resilient people have an attitude of realistic optimism. So they're not just like rainbows and sunshine all the time. They, they accept that things are going to happen in our life that are bad. And it doesn't mean that I'm bad or that life, like life is unfair. That's true. How we're seeing it, the lens we're seeing it through. Yeah. Okay. So there's this realistic optimism. So I can be optimistic about hope and resilience mm -hmm. and getting through things, but accept that bad things happen even to really lovely people. Like that's part of life. We know that resilient people have an attitude of uh, action, like they are involved in creating their life to be, or, de or dealing with the stressor in the best way they can. Mm. So if I'm dealing with a diagnosis, I want to attack it or understand it or support it, right? If I'm dealing with a change in my life, what can I do to, to make it easier or to make that transition positive, right? That, to see the positivity in it. We also know that people who are resilient have close social ties, like they are close to their friends and their colleagues and their um, community, that um, those kinds of social networks we know s support um, resilience in communities and in individuals. You must see that in the trauma work that you do. Yeah, definitely. It's really impressive in that people can go through incredible trauma and yet have these strengths or learn and grow through the trauma and sometimes not even seem that phased. A big crisis comes into their life and they say, you know what, I've been through a lot already. I can get through this too. And mm -hmm. for me, that's been a really strong role model to how am I dealing with things? How could I look at things? And looking to people in my life who have handled stress or trauma uh, has taught me actually quite a bit. 
It's inspiring, yeah, right? It oh is. my goodness. So there's that piece about precondition. What can I do to take really good care of my health and wellness so that if bad things happen, I'm ready for it, or I've got some space before I'm in trouble from from good health. I want to try to deal with the stressor, reduce it, change it, avoid it, manipulate it, move it around if I what can. What I can do so right? I don't feel hopeless or stuck with it. Absolutely. Yeah. And then there's these attitudes and connections mm. I want to build to enhance resilience, to have this flexible endurance. So I think about, um, in, actually resilience is a term psychologists stole from engineers, sorry really? about that, when they were building <laughs> bridges and learning how to have flexible strength, right? Something that can bend and move with the environment. Uh, you don't want rigid, you want flexible. Mm. And you you want it to endure, you want it to have a long lasting um, quality to it, that not something that will just erode uh, quickly. So this is true of psychology too, that in our resilience we want to be flexible and we want to have endurance. That ideally we're going the long way in our lives uh, with a flexible attitude towards wellness. Mm. And you know what? That reminds me of the human brain because if we've had lots of trauma and stressors throughout our lives, we do get stressed more easily and we struggle more easily, but we can also build and foster that resilience, new networks in the brain that make us stronger and more able to problem solve and to handle things better and to be less reactive. Uh, kind of like a bridge. If it's not built well early on, there are things we can do to bolster and rebuild that bridge to be really strong and flexible. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. We hope that therapy is part of that. Counseling and support, oh my gosh, if a psychologist can help you, that's exactly what we are trained to do. You've got medical practitioners around you, family and friends. There are lots of resources in Alberta to help if you need it. Thank you.